Hi folks, today we're going to look at the Sony Z2 or Z2, depending on where you come from, the latest, greatest Android smartphone from the giant Sony Corporation. It's a real zinger, it's an upgrade from the Z1 of course, but it uh, it is definitely an improvement. I mean, it has a 5.2 inch screen, 1080 by 1920, 2.3 gigahertz processor um, running Android 4.4.2 3 gigabytes of RAM so it's got an extra gigabyte 16 gigabytes, gigabytes of storage inside and yay it has a micro SD slot which will take up to 128 gigabytes so although it's a sealed case a unibody with a, a 3200 milliamp hour battery inside which is a stonking huge battery for a phone of this size it um, does have expandable storage which we love and 20.7 megapixel camera, um, which is the same as the camera on most of the other Sony flagship phones. Let's have a look inside the box and see what you get. Screen cover, charge block and cable. This is actually a noise cancelling headset, so that's unusual. That's great for things like airplanes and stuff where you want to keep the noise down and hear your music better. And uh, an adapter there for the USB, the micro USB, and the documentation. So fairly standard inside the box. Right, the phone has NFC and Bluetooth on it, um, a barometer, FM radio even, look at that, eh? And it has a bunch of stuff which we're now becoming familiar with, which is the Sony media stuff. What's great about Sony is it's it, it, it has, of course, this very, very strong pedigree in games with the PS4, the PlayStation, in music with the Walkman, and movies. Of course, they own major studios and stuff. So, you know, they're trying to obviously integrate all this onto their flagship smartphones, and it's really quite quite interesting because it differentiates them from the others quite significantly. Hence, I suspect that the need to throw in large batteries and huge amounts of RAM. They're intending this to be a full-blown multimedia powerhouse, and I think they've succeeded. So let's go through a few of the things which we really like about it. I mean, the screen is beautiful, of course. Of course, it's helped by a very fast processor. I mean, 2.3 gigahertz is, is a screaming Snapdragon processor in there. It's a very nice looking screen, very easy to read, very crisp. Um, and works very well. If we look at the ergonomics of the phone as well, I particularly personally really like this ability to hit the power button on the side here. It's, it's, it makes it ambidextrous actually because you can do both sides. So, you know, it's that to me is some of the phones put them all over the weird, weird places, you know, and, and the power buttons and stuff. So it's hard to get to. This is very uh, easy to operate. On this side, we have very little action going on, but on this side, the micro SD slot, the power button we've just shown, volume up and down, and a dedicated hardware camera key, which is quite useful, we'll come to that later. On the this side here is the USB charge point and the SIM card slot. On the top, the 3.5 headphones, and mics and speakers are arranged stereo-wise on the back of the camera, which is the 20.7 meg 20 megapixel, and the little flash, tiny little flash. Probably one of the first things to say is that it looks from our first testing that the battery life is excellent, or at least the battery management and the battery life is excellent. We've had this on, on just on, sitting on standby for a couple of days now, and it's still chunking along no problem. I think we're, we're at 70%. We're at I mean, we haven't used it for any calls or anything like that. We've just been doing demos and testing out the phone and stuff. But even so, it does seem to, to maximize the use of the battery through some very clever power management. Let's have a look, in fact, at, the, at that. So if you look at the power management option, you get a, a nice little indicator of the battery life available to you, eight days, 12 hours on, in, in this particular setup. And I've got it on stamina mode. Basically what that means is it turns off the, uh, the data if you turn the screen off. So that is a really cool. It, makes, it turns the phone into an inert lump of metal when you're not using it, which we think is probably perfect. The others based, are based really on 
There's also a bunch of stuff that um, the phone offers, again, <laughs> coming back to media again and sound and, and, and things like that, under the sound menu. And these are things which, again, are there to improve your experience. So for the sound enhancements, you have not just a standard equalizer, but if you look at the settings, you get a bunch of, of options to improve the sound and change the sound. X loud for improving the, the loudness of the speakers, clear stereo, clear phase. I'm not really sure what they do in terms of giving different uh, frequency responses and stuff like that, but it's obviously geared towards improving the sound of the, of the phone when you're playing media. I mean, if I play, will that play? So, how does it sound? Well, sounds all right. It's got I mean, it's not a an HDC level of uh, of twin massive speakers, but it'll do. It's louder than the Z1 from what I understand. So, what else have we got? Let's have a look. So what does all this power and media stuff mean in terms of actual operation? Well, let's run through a few things, shall we? Let's do a bit of browsing and just see what we got here. As you can see, it's, as you expect, it's a very nice, smooth, clear, crisp, fast processor and screen, and it's good, yeah. Maps, let's have a look, rush through these, because you've seen all this kind of stuff a million times before, let's... find there you go so we're talking pretty instant scrolling and map tiling I'm in Norway already there you go a couple of seconds later let's just see if we can find Helsinki there you go I think you'll agree that's pretty fast um, 3 giga gigs of RAM and a 2.3 gigahertz quad core processor really do make a difference and so what about things like gaming? Well, let's try a little bit of gaming, shall we, with Real Racing, which I know is a perennial um, favorite. There you go, here's a bit of... Oh. So I'm trying various different options, but I think you can probably tell the frame rate is not a problem. So a close-up of the, the graphics, it's gorgeous. Let's just turn that down a bit as you can see it's absolutely not faltering at all it's a great screen one other thing which you might be worthwhile looking at of course is the camera itself so if you press the hardware button you'll get a camera arrive um, which is your pretty standard sort of camera affair let's see if I can take a shot of something and show you so most of the time you'll be using it, well, most people will use it in the superior auto mode, which actually runs at eight megapixels. It's not using the full 20 um, 0.7 megapixels. I guess that's because they want to get the maximum crispness and everything like that. There's some cool things about it. You get social streaming out of the, um, out of this uh, thing. So you can actually do live video streaming to Facebook if you want to do that, which I can see all sorts of problems arising because of that immediately. Um, there's also um, something called time shift in the, uh, in the settings. And that is uh, pretty cool actually. It gives you a high frame rate video and then you can apply slow motion to the clips and make the clips 120 frames per second um, sort of slow motion, which is really cool. So it's a, a nice way to get some good shots. These uh, features are also all available if you want to use them via a, a widget. The slow-mo, the time shift is there. And once you've taken it, let me just show you what I mean by the slow motion. You can select portions of the clip you want to change. So there's, and so you'll see this little stripey thing at the side here. If I add more or make them look longer or shorter, then part of the video will be, once it's processed, will be in slow motion, which is a very quick and easy way to get some nice um, effects on your video. Let's have a look at that. Come on. 
Well, I don't know if you can see, but that's going pretty slow. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, anyway, it may not dim so well, but it actually does work. One of the things we're finding a little tricky in, on, on this interface is the soft keep button. So as, as they disappear, you have to make a sort of a stabby guess at where they're gonna be when they come back. Um, oh, sorry, they're the other end. See, that's what I mean, exactly what I mean. So they tend to appear at weird places. So they've gone to the top now, and that's the home back key and, and whatever. So it's a bit tricky, it's, there's no hard uh, keys um, set into the handset itself, which uh, it'll take a bit of getting used to, I can assure you. So the Sony Z2 or Z2, what do we think about it? Well, I have to say it's definitely the best Sony um, phone we've ever seen, period. It's powerful, um, massive amounts of storage in terms of RAM um, and the expandable micro SD, which was one of our big bugbears with previous iterations of, uh, of these unibody phones. It has a great screen, handles everything you throw at it. I mean, obviously it's, it's media um, compatible to the nth degree. It'll handle you know, games and movies and music and all sorts of stuff without even blinking. It's a fabulous, fabulous handset. I like the ergonomics of it. I like the, the slimline size. It's uh, it, it. I mean, for a 5.2 inch screen, it, it's, it's still remarkably um, handy, you know, in terms of being usable. You can actually f f get it in the hand and, and carry it around. I like that. Overall, I think it's, a, it's probably one of the best, if not the best handsets we've ever looked at. That includes the Galaxy S5, purely because I prefer the interface. I find the Galaxy has now become too complicated and too tricky to use, whereas this is a very simple, very easy to understand interface in all its areas, whether it's settings or, or whatever. If you're looking for a flagship top-end smartphone, this is definitely, definitely should be on your, your list, um, and probably at the top, actually, to, uh, of your list. Really nice. So, as usual, if you've enjoyed this video, Please like it and share it and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more cool stuff. Thanks very much.